Welcome to my demonstration of the Google Web Speech API. My name is Mohammed. I'm going to be showing you three different demos on high level examples of use cases for the Google Web Speech API and kind of just uh, what I've come up with after dabbling with the API for about, you know, four weeks. So expect it to be high level. I'm not going to be running through much of the code. It's main, mainly going to be a conceptual and demonstration of how I went about thinking, solving solutions for this, um, using this API. Okay, so, and I'll also provide some examples on how you can use it to, to solve your problems on your websites. And applications so stay tuned and see what to talk about it. so I have three demos this is the first demo this is the bare minimum kind of um, and we'll run through some of the code most of its boilerplate okay so only styling I have is I'm selling the body for, with, with monospace uh, 22 pixels font size and I have two spans and this is kind of how they demonstrated on the Google site as well two spans and then one span is for inter interim results and the other span is for the speech, the uh, final results. Okay, so let's go. So here I'm checking to see if the speech recognition API even exists and then if it doesn't, I'll, I'll run this function which alerts just use Google Chrome. Um, and here's three variables. Uh, just to grab the HTML elements and this is just the style the interim span so it looks like it's not a, a temporary result which it is a temporary result and then uh, the final result is not light I will show you might as well just show you so let us run no doubt so Notice I'm not running any build tools. I don't have any frameworks. The only framework I'm using is Node.js with Express. And I am just like some arbitrary, just random modules and the YouTube API. Okay, so that's the last demo. That's what I'll show you lastly. So you'll see as I speak, it had it enabled on default. It'll actually, for somebody else, for a new v uh, user, it will prompt them to ask and ask them whether they'd like to enable speech recognition on this website and you say allow or not allow. And then uh, it, it just, you know, listens to your speech. You have everything enabled correctly. So let's look at the code. So this is my own function. This is instantiating the API. Web uh, speech recognition, WebKit. This is for uh, Safari mainly in Chrome, and this is just general. These are some of the uh, what are they? Methods? Or they're just parameters, or not parameters, but like uh, variables. Okay, and continuous. It runs continuously if this is set to true. Interim, this will log interim results if um, it's set to true. And then language, you set US, you can say UK, and that's it. So, and then here, I'm enabling the speech on default. So as soon as application is loaded, the window is loaded, I run the start method. Okay, and yeah. So I can actually put this in here. Yeah, so let's see what else. If I want to do that, might as well. You know, I don't need to do this. I don't need to do this. Yeah, this is a, my own variable as well. So I'll be using this on the next demo for a specific use case. But you could do anything with this, right? So if it is recognizing, you could do something on the DOM, right? If it's not, you can disable something on the DOM, for example. What else? So this is the variables for the uh, transcripts. So they're inter interim transcripts, and then they're the final transcripts. And um, this 
is mostly boilerplate from here on out. So this is the for loop that runs. I grabbed this straight out, out of uh, the documentation, right? Nothing, it's exactly the same uh, as on the Google documentation. And this is where I, with the anchored elements that I grabbed up here, I grab the NRHTML and I update it on every time this updates. So this will continuously update if it's set to continuous, obviously. So let's see what else. So I'm logging into error here on error and then that's it. On end, this function method runs when this is done after there is a result. So then this method runs and then you can set a rec I set recognizing to false and then I reset and the reset function just kind of um so I don't need to do this here either yeah so that's recognizing the false and just uh clears the text and starts it up again and that's it that's kind of like my loop so you notice as I speak it's just logging the speech doesn't have any functionality or anything. It's just logging the speech so I can see what's going on. It's pretty accurate if you speak clearly and loudly and all that. Okay, next demo. Okay, so now this demo, this demo is a little different. It not only does it look different because I, you know I just added some more styling, which like it's a couple lines of CSS but it functions different as well. So on default, it's set that uh, nothing is logged out. So I'm speaking right now, it's not recognizing my, t uh, my voice, right? But when I hold Q, so now it can listen to my voice and update the text, right? So this is kind of the toggle functionality that you would expect coming out of a normal application right um, so the way you do this is kind of important you don't want to have many different cases to where you know oh if this is listening if this is true for recognizing if if this if that um, you wanna and that's why applications like react are great if, if you can build a state into uh, if you can use this with things like state it's very powerful and you could update things very uh, quickly and unique uniquely and uh, it'll feel like a just a single page application so and that's what we're aiming for so but for this specific demo I included also an added feature right but uh, I'll show you the code afterwards first let me demonstrate change background color to blue okay so as you can see updated the dom the background color of the body and I set a transition so it would have a nice effect so like I said background ah oh god change background color to white smoke All right and you can set it to have to where it works with multiple words with multiple um, or colors of multiple words inside. So like white smoke, for example, in HTML5, it's one single word, right? But in the web speech, if I say web uh, white smoke, right, it's two words. So we want to concatenate that. So I'll show you the code that does that. And it also works for three words. So for example, change background to dark olive green. Ah, change background color to dark olive green. There you go. Okay, so let us look at that code. So same thing, upgrade function, checking for web speech. All this is pretty much the same, adding a couple new variables. Uh, we not got another reset method function and we're also toggling. So this is where the toggle happens, right? I check the document for an on key down, right? And I, the event gives me what key that I held down, right? In this case, I'm using Q, so 
uh, when Q is held down, I check if it's recognizing or if, if it's not recognizing. And if it's not, then I start the web speech uh, speech recognition. If, and then the next method is on key up, right? I check the document for an on key up with the event of key Q. Q is the actual key that I'm pressing on the keyboard, right? And if that key goes up, then we're checking if it's recognizing. If so, then we stop on key up, right? So on key up, it should stop to reset everything. On key down, it should start. Okay, that's the basics. And everything else is the same. We're logging the continuous stream of data into these variables. And this time, we're doing some more stuff. So I'm, I'm making it into an array with the split method, right? And because it's speech base it's it's a sentence right so separated words are separated by spaces so uh, this is how I turn it into an array the split method returns an array and then you could set where uh, we're splitting the actual string okay uh, okay and then I slice the end of the array and I return so background color isn't actually the background well it is actually it's the background color and but it's not I'll show you how it works so background color has the last three words of the array of the sentence that I spoke so the last three words meaning means if I say change background to uh, crap, change background color to white color to white is the last three words I said so if color to white we don't want it to get the color and the two we only want the white so I use the two keyword and I check where is two if two is the first word in this array in this background color array then I want to concatenate the, the last two words right so we're saying two white smoke two white and smoke and then uh, background color if the second uh, item in the array is two, then I'm setting the last color only, right? Which is the third uh, item in the array, and then else just put everything together, okay? And in this case, right, the two isn't even one of the these three items, so it, it'll it has to, in most cases, be in this array rather than in this array. Anyways, the way you do it, you can build it however you really want to. Um, it's probably better if you were to build some kind of um, large-scale component and then piggybacked off of that for the commands. And But this is just for demonstration purposes. So Yeah, everything else is the same. I don't do anything on end. Maybe on end I should probably reset. And on error, yeah. Just log the error, that's it. So check the function or check the web page one more time. Testing application. Change background to red. Ah oh, crap, I keep forgetting I have to say color as well. Change background color to crimson. And there you go. So it's kind of just a simple demonstration of how you can build some functionality using the WebSkip API. Um, I'm going to cut the video and do a last video with the last demo, and then we'll go from there. All right, guys, thanks for watching. All right, we're back. Welcome back. We are going over the Web Speech API, Google Web Speech API. And if you want to look at documentation on Mozilla Developer Network, here's a link. And we'll be talking about this next video, speech grammar, and how we can use this to make your speech results more accurate. All right. So let us begin. So the last demo was just a simple changing background had a, a, a simple changing background function so change background color to white smoke Maybe white smoke is hard to see 
change background color to crimson. There you go. So you can see it works and the toggle function works as well. So if I hold Q, it can listen. If I let go, it stops listening. Uh, and let's look at the last demo. So this has the same functionality almost. All right, holding Q and I could I could speak and I could look at what I'm saying and it gets getting some feedback relative to what I'm saying so and it gives me something to do up here it says show me and then anything you want to see so what I've done was I built this function or this application uh, with the YouTube API so you can search YouTube for any video and it'll just bring back a random video that's rele relevant to what you're trying to say or what you are saying. So let's try it. Show me Hans Zimmer music. All right, cool. So it created this iframe and it now I could watch Hans Zimmer. And let's say I want to see, see in dark mode. Okay, so turn on dark mode. Okay, so now, yeah, everything works. Uh, I can turn it off while the video is playing. Turn off dark mode. Okay, and you notice it said dock mode. That's because, uh, you know, sometimes you have to compensate. That's what why I'm going to make this video in the future. Uh, you, we want more accurate results for the web speech API. So this is how we achieve that. Anyways, so the video is still playing. I have it enabled so that, right, I'm holding this, let go, hold, let go, and then I could hold, drag, let go, and it, it'll stay listening. Right, which is I thought was a cool function. So let's turn off dark mode. Turn off dark mode. Hmm. Okay, so that's a glitch. It's not going to be 100% working, uh, unfortunately, because I didn't want to debug too much, uh, and there is a lot of debugging to do. So let's do something else. Let's listen. Show me ridiculousness. There you go. Oh no. Oh no. Got it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Turn on dark mode. Oh. I, as you can see, it's working as we expected. So that's just kind of a simple application demonstrating what you can do with the web speech API. Uh, you could build in functionality to uh, change the DOM. You can build in functionality to, okay, now we're not going to stop. We're going to stop there. Functionality to get data from a server. You can always do anything from a database. So that concludes our series on web speech api thanks for watching